Howard Stern. You've been on The View. You've been yeah. on Last Comic Standing. But now you've officially made it. You finally yeah. made it on Beverages with Brad in yes. Rhode Island. This is a dream come true, everybody. And where's my beverage, by the way, Brad? I didn't want it to get cold. You wanted a coffee. And, right. and or diet coke? Yeah, I couldn't you decide. You drink coke and I coffee? like just all, I just like, I should just inject the caffeine, caffeine. right in. Uh, no. Comedians the cars, cars, yeah. comedian cars. I haven't, I haven't been asked for that yet. So I'm going to I'm gonna settle for this. You should Brad, be on there. Beverages um, with Brad. This is so much better. So when you are on there, you got to tell them this like is, you're taking a step down. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm drinking coffee too. And I I drive around in a minivan. It's not the, you know, it's not the greatest. Have you met that dude? I think briefly he came, walked into a club once, uh, briefly uh, met him. Uh, is he a douche? He, a douche would you he's tell not me? the nicest, I don't think, like the most friendly, but I kind of don't blame him. I think he's just kind of like, you know, when Weird. you're that, yeah, when you're Weird that, fame? yeah, when you're that famous, like everyone's accosting you at every given moment. Like I think you have your guard up all the time. The level of nerves doing uh, shows like uh, Last Comic Standing. Yeah, tell me you, you about do, your You experience. do get nervous on those things. And you're always trying to figure out, um, you know, what do they want, which is the worst thing to do, and that's what gets you nervous. Like, you don't know what they want. You should just, you know, screw it and just do your thing. And it's so easy, you said, then done, just do your thing. If they're not yeah. looking for you, they're not looking for you. It's, that someone's going to look for you at some point. Colin Quinn, who I dated, by the way, he said, and, and, the, and all these, uh, if you look at all, you know, people who do these shows, they all say, what turned it around for you? It was, they say this, it was when I stopped trying. When I am depressed, I always get the most compliments. Because in those moments, I genuinely don't give a shit because I'm depressed. So, so it's like, great, what do I have to just ruin my entire life to make it in comedy? If you look at um, the history of really good comics, it's the um, tears of a clown. Um, and, so what's you know, the secret? You seem drugs happy. Or, I'm not on Jerry Seinfeld's show. So, in other words, if I, you, you know, were depressed, I too, I, you know, I you'd be on Comedians maybe. in Cars. Yeah, no. Um, I find the anger in issues. So that's why I'm happy. I, I acted out on stage. All the annoyance stuff, I leave it on stage. It's and I don't take it home. Yeah, and it's therapeutic. So I need, I need comedy. Maybe yeah. that's the happy medium where you don't have to be depressed 24 right. hours a day. Right. You can just save it for the stage. I'm pursuing stand-up in New York and... How that's going to be so intense. It was so very hard. intense. Like, New York City is intense anyway. I left Boston, um, where I was, you know, kind of doing well in comedy. People knew my name. To a bigger, bigger uh, realm of comics. And no one knew my name. I had, a, like, a bruised jaw for, for like, almost a year because I would wrench my teeth. So I was so stressed. So then I got a little couple of things here. I got a little manager. You know, everything kind of settled down. But it was, it was tough. It was like crying every day, and then it's every other day, and then every other week, and then it was every other month. And that's normal for me. So that's when I knew I could probably make it. So basically, what you're telling me is, uh, Brad, if you ever want to make it in comedy, you're just gonna cry a ton and get a mouth god. Yes. And then I'll be successful. You don't realize how tough it is. Like, I look back and I'm telling you these stories. It's like, oh my God, I would never do that again now. But I had the passion. So you didn't realize you were working that hard because you had the passion and you had a goal. What makes my skin crawl, the hair on the back of my neck stick up, and why I do this continually, night after night, is the people coming up to me after I do a set and they say, I just want to thank you. I um, just came out of uh, a divorce. This is my first night out in like five years and you made me laugh and you, you gave me hope or cancer. I've just been going through chemo this whole time and um, you really gave me hope, like things like that. And this one time, this lady brought her whole family to come see me. I go, you're here to see me? What? She goes, yeah, we were here last year. Afterwards, she came up to me, she goes, this is a memorial from my husband because the last time I seen him laugh so hard was when he saw you at this place because she wanted to celebrate what her husband was doing and laughing and he loved laughter. I mean, that. That's intense. I, tears were coming down my face. Those are the moments that keep you going. Those are the moments that like when you're about to quit, it's the real people that come up to you and say those things. And that's never on a resume and no one sees any of that stuff. Yeah. But it's here. Terry, it's been a pleasure.
Well, I have a gift for you. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is what we're here to promote today. <laughs> this is my book, Mean Mommy. Your sales are going to go through the roof. This is going to happen after right this now. Yeah, available on Amazon. And um, if you have Prime, you can get it with free shipping. So. There you go. This specific episode is going to be what launches your career. This is it. New heights. New heights. New heights. Buy my book, Amazon.com. <laughs>